plus x to three fourth. I have to simplify the function. It doesn't work. This is not this is not helping. I managed to change it entirely from x to u, but this function is not helping. Okay. So uh, this is the square root of x, and this is one plus the fourth root of x to the third. Something is going on, or I'm losing someone, or it's coming back. Okay. So again, I'm still interested in doing this. So the fourth root of x squared is the same thing with the square root of x. And this is 1 plus the fourth root of x to the third. So if I, so what we did was the cube root, the fourth root of x was t. So then I have t squared over 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t to the third. If I denote the, Q, the fourth root of x by t, then I have t squared over 1 plus, oh, 1 plus t, sorry. 1 plus, no, that's correct. So I have the cube root of x, yes, and the cube root of x, the fourth root of x three times, the fourth root of x twice, yes. Okay, um, what I would have done in this particular case is in chapter 7, which is partial fraction decomposition. But I can teach that to you. It's very simple, but we have to factor this. So uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to do it, but just, I'm just going to show you how to do this. So it's t squared minus t plus 1 when you factor this. And from this moment on, the whole thing is easy. So t plus 1 plus you're going to, when we get to calc 2, uh, bt plus c over t squared minus t plus 1. But I can continue with this method because we haven't discussed that. Okay. So I have to find an easier way. I mean, this is easy, but a uh, different way. So I'm still back to this, the fourth root of x squared, and indeed the fourth root of x cubed. Okay, so I will say that let t be the fourth root of x. Uh, dt is, so this is x to one fourth. So this is one fourth x to one fourth minus one three fourth dx. It's my only chance to do it like that. So where's my problem? Here's my problem. I'm going to copy it. 1 to 16. Uh, x to 1 half over 1 plus x to 3 fourth dx. Okay, perfect. So I will only denote um, the fourth root of x by t. Then this so then dt will become 1 over 4 t to the third dt, uh, t to the third dx. So let's start from, from scratch. I think I, I think I see where, where we're going now, finally. Uh, so t is the fourth root of x. Uh, dt is 1 fourth x to negative 3 fourth dx. So then dt, I bring this to the denominator. So I get the fourth root of x to the third. So this is this, but cubed, dx. Perfect. So now the integral will be when x is 1, t is 1. When x is 16, the fourth of 16 is 2. And now careful, everything has to change. This is t squared. This is 1 plus t to the third. And dx, 
dx is 4 t cubed dt. 4 t cubed dt. OK, so the integral from 1 to 2, 4 can stay outside, uh, t to the fifth over 1 plus t to the third dt. And again, I'm getting to the same, so same situation in which I would have used um, partial fraction decomposition, because we need to divide. But for this, should be a, an easier method. Uh, let me do one more thing. I want to square this. 1 plus x to 3 fourths. Let's see what happens when we square this. 1 plus 2, the fourth root of x to the third, plus this squared. Um, I can't rationalize. Uh, the other thing I could do is just rearrange the function. So as we had this, OK. If I divide, I get 1 over the square root of x plus the fourth root of x cubed over the fourth root of x squared. And this is the fourth root of x. And this is 1 over 1 over t squared. And this is t. I don't know what they uh, meant, because I'm, I'm only getting the situation in which I would be using partial fraction decomposition. This was probably a bad question to ask. No, it's, it's really not a bad, bad question to ask at all. Um, some questions end up in a, in a chapter where I think they shouldn't be in. Uh, it could be just a, a little trick that they expect us to um, to think of right away. I'm trying different uh, situations to see what happens here. If I multiply and divide, then I have the square root of x, 1 minus the fourth root of x to the third. Now let's see what happens in the denominator. I get 1 minus x um, to 3 fourths squared, which is 3 halves. Because it's a plus b, a minus b. OK, fine. So the square root of x, 1 minus over 1 minus x to the square root of x. The problem is very easy once uh, we use partial fraction decomposition, but I can, that's part of chapter 7. So I can show you that it would have been done by now. But um, so we tried a substitution that and I was getting. Where's my page? 
So this was okay, but we can't continue. We don't have a we don't have a way of continuing that that piece unless oh unless I have if I multiply top and bottom. Oh, I see. So from that four thirds, the integral from two to nine, the cube root of u minus one over u du. Um, I change the denominator like this cubed u minus 1 over u cubed. So this will be um, u over u squared. So it's 1 over u squared minus 1 over u cubed. Um, but then I'm running into this cube root situation that I can get rid of. It's a very interesting problem. The only method that I can think of right now is the partial fraction decomposition. So with t squared, we factor 1 plus t cubed like this. And we get these coefficients. And it's a piece of cake from there. I don't seem to be able to simplify this function well enough in order for a substitution uh, to work like that. I square that, it didn't work. If I rationalize it, I think I did rationalize it. Uh, if, I, if I rationalize it, but I, I can only multiply and divide, it's the fourth root, so it's not going to work. It's going to be too long. I don't expect this to be that long. Did I copy the, by the way, did I copy the problem correctly? That's also important. Yes, it was one half and it was three fourths, correct. I can only think of one other x to one half, one plus x to 3 fourths dx. Um, if what all this? So I need the connection between the fourth root of x to the third and the square root of x. So the fourth root of x to the third. And for this to be the fourth root, it will be x squared. OK. Um, Professor, we, we can move on to the 5.4. We will. 5.4. OK. Yeah. We will move on. Although I really wanted to finalize this. So, so this is three fourth, um, three fourth x two, three fourth minus one, which was negative one fourth dx, and this is it's squared. Yep. Um, I will have to think about another method to present it to you uh, and not partial fraction decomposition. I will show you the partial fraction decomposition that works very well, but we that's part of Chapter 7. I will think about it after class and I'll come up with something. Sorry. Some of the problems, as I said, I don't think they belong in this chapter. And we, I think this is one of them, but there may be a little trick that I am not thinking of at this moment. Okay, so the other, I promise to get a solution for you after class. 
OK, so what I was uh, going to talk about is the last, oh, the last uh, uh, theorem that is in section 5.4. It's, it's called the net change theorem. So the net change theorem, if you remember, we talked about a particle that was doing this. And we were asked to find the total distance. And we said when it goes to the positive direction, and then it goes to the negative direction, and then it comes back to the positive direction. So for the total distance, we use the absolute value between this point and this point, plus the absolute value between this point and this point, and plus the absolute value between this point and this point. There is no need to do this anymore. Because now we know that the total distance between two points with time t1 and time t2 is the definite integral from t1 to t2 from the absolute value of the velocity function dt. You can say this is for velocity. What about uh, for total cost? Same formula. Total cost between time t1 and time t2 is the definite integral from t1 to t2 from the absolute value of c prime of t dt. What about total profit? Same thing. Between time t1 and time t2. It's t1 from t1, the definite integral from t1 to t2 from the absolute value of the profit, the rate of change of profit, of course. Uh, dt, rate of change, marginal profit, marginal profit, marginal cost. They're all the same thing. So I just wanted to identify uh, and ask a couple of questions here, and then we're going to look at applications of this. And this is the last thing that we need to do. But I do want to show you um, a couple of integrals after this. So um, these are other examples of definite integrals and indefinite integrals. We're going to look at them, too. But I just wanted to um, ask this couple of questions here. Let me see if I can find them. I was looking at 60 something, 60, 60, while you are looking at the, um, yeah. If oil leaks from a tank at a rate of r of t gallons per minute, so this is basically the rate of change, right? It's a derivative. What does the integral, the definite integral from 0 to 120 of r of t, the rate of change, r of t dt represent? What do you think? Is, is what we just wrote a second ago. Total gallons. Total, yes, between uh, zero hours and zero minutes, sorry. Zero minutes and 120 minutes. Exactly. A honeybee population starts with 100 bees. So that's the initial. And increases at a rate of n prime. Here it is. Uh, per week. What does 100 plus the definite integral from 0 to 15 from n prime of t dt represent? Total honeybee representation. Exactly. Population. This is the increase added to the 100, assuming they're not dying out. OK, so we got the idea. So let's also look at 63. We define the marginal revenue, as we discussed. Um, as the derivative of the revenue function, of course, where x is the number of units sold. What does the definite integral from 1,000 to 5,000 of r prime of x dx represent? x is the number of units. So this integral will represent The total, total revenue. total of revenue between yes, from uh, producing and s not just producing but selling a thousand to five thousand. Notice that here there was no need for the absolute value. 
So the reason is because those numbers are all positive. So if the cost, if we're talking about the cost, the rate of change could be negative, right? And but here they were they were telling us that they were increasing, right? So if we 